Hello and a warm swagatim to It's My Life, the program that brings you face to face with the multifaceted politicians of the country. This week we are in the capital city of God's own country, Tiruvannathapuram. And our guest is a person who does not need much of an introduction. He's a columnist, a writer, a former diplomat, and of course, a renowned politician. Let's meet Minister of State for Human Resource and Development, Dr. Shashi Tharoor this time. Minister of State for Human Resource and Development Shashi Tharoor, Member of Parliament from the constituency of Tiruvannathapuram, was born in London to Lily and Chandran Tharoor. After his parents returned to India, he began his schooling at Montfort School in Yerkot, Tamil Nadu and Campion School in Mumbai. Tharoor subsequently obtained a bachelor's degree from St. Stephen's College in Delhi and then pursued graduate studies at Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University, from where he obtained an MA, MALD and a PhD in 1979 at the age of 23. Shashi Tharoor's career in the United Nations began in 1978 as a staff member of the UN High Commissioner for Refugees in Geneva. From 1981 to 1984, he headed the UNHCR office in Singapore during the boat people crisis. Until 2007, he was a career official at the United Nations, rising to Under Secretary General for Communications and Public Information, but resigned after losing to Ban Ki Moon in 2007 election for the Secretary General. After his entry into politics in 2009, he served as a Minister of State for External Affairs but resigned in less than a year after a controversy. It's early morning time at Condor Marigold Department of Shashi Tharoor, busy with his morning Janta Darbar, meeting people from all sections of Tiruvannathapuram society. And we are now heading towards a religious spot. Atukala Bhagwati Temple and we begin our Tiruvannathapuram journey from this particular place. achieved by 2.5 million women in an event organized by the Atukal Bhagwati temple and which is why this temple is also called the Lady Sabrimala temple.
so Dr. Tharoor, uh, what, do, what is the real speciality of this temple and it's how big is this It's a very, event? very famous temple, the Artigal Temple. Incredibly uh, large gathering of women who come not only from Trivandrum but from all the southern districts of Kerala and Tamil Nadu to perform the Pongala. The Pongala is a, uh, a festival in which women cook uh, rice and kheer and so on for God. And, and, and it's literally uh, lacks of um, uh, these little wood fires all along. In fact, it will be worth coming back to see because literally the Pongala fires are lit all the way up to the center of town. Okay. Because those who come very early, sometimes two, three days early and spend the night here, mm. they get positions nearer the temple. Okay. Otherwise, it stretches on all the sidewalks into the middle of Trivandra. When the uh, Pongala happens, mm. uh, essentially the population of Tiruvannathapuram city, which is only one million, yeah. gets doubled or more than doubled, ten yeah. times sometimes, the number of people who come for that day. We are at a school opening ceremony, a school which has been built with his MP Lads Fund. So, uh, what have you done through the MP Lads program? Because we just saw this uh, particular school. You know, we have, uh, to be very honest, I've done about 150 projects mm -hmm. in the four years so far under the MPLAD fund, so it's difficult to give you a quick summary. Mm -hmm. They range from constructing anganwadis where little children can be uh, looked after during the day while their parents are at work, okay. to uh, uh, school buildings, rooms, computers for the schools, uh, science labs, all the sort of thing. Even before I came into the Human Resource Development Ministry, I would try and give uh, as much as I could. But you don't have a target of numbers or anything per year that okay you want to yeah, do you this Yeah, the idea is to spend every penny the government gives. So uh, the government gives used to give two crores a year, now it's five crores a year, and we spend it all. Thank you. challenges of rural Kerala at this point in time. We came to your constituency, we saw, I mean, there, there are a number of schools, a number of hospitals. We have all the challenges that you can imagine, because even though Kerala in some ways, in many ways, is better off than other states, uh, and the levels of absolute poverty here are lower than elsewhere, there still are some challenges. Agriculture is in a very bad shape. Okay. Uh, we are actually suffering uh, from drought in some parts of the state, particularly here in the Tirantapuram area, okay. where there's been severe shortage of rainfall last time. When it comes to image projection and taking a number of initiatives, are you are you doing something as because you were also involved with uh, with the communications strategy and everything? <laughs> so are you doing particularly anything? Well, that uh, was very different. I must say that. Um, uh, I haven't actually, in the first couple of years, mm -hmm. I refused to do all the conventional things uh, okay. to promote uh, my image. I felt my work would speak for itself. Okay. So I refused to let uh, even well-meaning supporter groups put up flex boards and so on. I said they'd deface the countryside. I don't want okay. to do this. I refused to put up posters. I think gradually you that work. And then everyone said, uh, what you're doing, nothing, you're inactive, you're invisible. I said, you have no idea how much work I've done. Look at all the things I've got. They said, how do we know that? So I finally surrendered and now we're doing a lot more of this um, in terms of putting out material. There are flex boards uh, advertising some of our accomplishments. When it comes to, comes to controversies and the kind of controversies you faced in the initial years, uh, I mean, 
what I mean, you ju it just happened. Like you, you said something and it became a controversy. Okay. Like that controversy over the word interlocutor, mm, which yeah. I use perfectly correctly. Mm, mm. Interlocutor does not I mean you intermediary. The also. But uh, but unfortunately, the press made such a song and dance about it mm. that it blighted the prime minister's visit to Saudi Arabia, and I felt so bad mm. that I had been the reason for it, even though I had not said anything wrong. So this is the frustration that one has in our media environment. Right. Uh, that, um, in fact, somebody was saying that, having read about all my so-called controversies, um, that these would not have been controversies in any other democracy. Right. Cattle class is a routine expression yeah. in most English-speaking countries. But cattle class reminds me. Are you a little careful now yeah, while tweeting? Of okay, now you think twice before you. I do, it and I'm very careful with using any humor. Okay. That can be misunderstood because our, the terrain of our politics mm. is is not friendly or not hospitable to humour. Dr. Thiru, are you still considered as an elite outsider when you move around the political circles? Not in my constituency. In my constituency, the acceptance by people is fabulous. Mm. And in urban India mm. and sort of educated middle class India, mm. I think I'm very much seen mm. as somebody they can relate to. Mm. Shashi Tharoor has just gone inside for an airport advisory committee meeting. Ida Poi, Ida Vanu. Is that Malayalam right, sir? Close enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a break at this point in time. When we come back, we take you to the rural parts of Tiruvannathapuram. Don't go away. Back in a moment. and the rural areas in Kerala is not very distinct. We are right now at Vallarada village, which is almost at the borders of Kerala and Tamil Nadu. This place abounds in primary health centers. There are a number of schools and the people look more or less contented. <laughs> rural meetings and rallies are always about a different flavor for Shashi Tharoor. Close to 10 villages have gathered where people from far off places have come to hear and see him. After hectic touring of the constituency, this is Dr. Tharoor's favorite tea stall by the village side. And guess what? The exotic black tea. And to Rajya Sabha TV. Okay. And again, Madam. Hello, Madam. Hello. 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 It's time now to get ready for some serious meetings, but before that, he needs to change and freshen up. Right now we are at Dr. Shashi Tharoor's office in Trivandrum and this crowd of people you see behind me are petitioners who've come up with their grievances hoping that their MP is going to listen to them. Mm. 
now heading towards All Saints College where Dr. Tharoor is going to interact with women. This is All Saints Women's College, an opportunity for women and girls to interact with the minister. Now I call upon Amrita of uh, DC to Communication in English to come onto the stage. Congratulations, you. so proud of you, so proud of you. I have a small little something for you. Thank we'll you. get something better, it's just a diary. Oh, I should write something, sure. And this is, it? Well done. The biggest event politically in New Delhi uh, in the last part of last year, in December, the sad attack on a young woman. It has raised questions in the minds of young people, particularly in the nation's capital, Delhi. They say, can we not be safe in our own country's capital? The truth is that India is, by and large, not an unsafe country. What do we do to empower women? The first and most important thing, in my view, is education. If you educate a boy, you educate a person, and that's very good, very important. But various studies have proved that if you educate a girl, you educate a family, you transform a community, you change society. A hot favorite amongst women, Tharoor charmed the audience with his impressive gift of the gap. So when you have to catch your lunch in the middle of uh, all these events, what do you normally prefer? You give your preferences from beforehand? This is the land of masala dosa, so one can very quickly get one. It takes 10 minutes and then you carry on. Sometimes it is part of the program that somebody will host me. I've had various kinds of um, lunches. I love Kerala food, the Kerala sadhya. There's a couple of things that Keralites love that I don't like. For example, the, the typical common Kerala dish is avil. Yeah. I can't stand avil. Okay. Then there is tapioca. Kappa, which is, um, I, you know, I didn't grow up here, so I never had that taste, and I just couldn't adjust. busy schedule. We are right now at the Shankamukham beach of Tiruvannathapuram. What is so special about this place? Well, this is where uh, all of Trivandrum and in some places beyond comes to relax, particularly in the evenings and on the weekends. But it's a historic place. Mm -hmm. We have, um, there's a fishing boat out there. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of public space, people to walk and kids to play and so mm -hmm. on. Okay. Uh, a lot of stands. If you come here in the evening, mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely chock-a-block with people. You won't be able to walk like this. You, you're never fond of going into the water and... I'm not much of a water person. In any case, once I do, how do I get changed again to get back to work? Career as an MP for the last three years. Uh, how would you rate yourself and how, I mean, do you feel that you've done justice to your job? Yes, in fact, I, I, I said when I first came here that if I felt I couldn't make a difference, I would not contest again. But I do feel I've made a difference. I'm actually very proud of the fact that I've been the only MP to have regularly released reports to the public. For a short break, don't go away. We'll come back with many more facets of Dr. Shashi Tharoor's life back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching It's My Life with Dr. Shashi Tharoor. From God's own country, we are back to his Delhi residence. Sunanda is, is, is a part of your life now and when she's not around, how, how much time do you really spend with each other? Because mostly you were telling me she's traveling. No, it's not that. It's that, um, it's that I'm 
um, gone a lot. Okay. And she has therefore less incentive to um, to remain here. Mm -hmm. She's um, got a son in Dubai mm -hmm. who's studying there. Okay. So and she has a home there that she she likes to visit. And she has some lingering professional interests there. Mm -hmm. She used to be working in the government real estate side, and that's okay. always uh, still there. But otherwise, her main interests now are very much her. She started a philanthropic charity called Nari for Women. Okay. She's also been helping with my tiny family foundation in Trivandrum that helps poor people there. Uh, many people have read about your life, how you met Sunanda. I'm not getting into those details, but w w just uh, maybe just tell us a little about that first moment when you met Sunanda. And well, when I first met her, mm -hmm. it was actually at a conference, um, mm. the reception following an education conference. By curiosity, I was I was asked to speak um, at a conference here in Delhi in the Imperial in 2008. Okay. Um, it was purely a social mm -hmm. thing at a reception. And in fact, for another year or so, we met at most three or four times mm. socially. It wasn't like a love at first sight or anything. It was like... <laughs> I was very attracted to her. Okay. Very attracted to her. Okay. But we blossomed into something else. In a very unusual situation, I remember a party mm -hmm. at a close friend's house mm -hmm. when suddenly an old gentleman there started choking. And Sunanda, who had accompanied me and was new to the place and to the friends there, mm -hmm. was the first one, in fact, the only one to rush over and help the old man and give him something to drink and, and stop him from choking. And, okay. And I just thought, what a remarkable woman. What's the kind of relationship with your kids now? And Sunanda is also with you. Okay, your kids also. No, my kids are not with me. Mm -hmm. It's very sad. They're now 28 years old. They have mm -hmm. their own lives. One of them is a, a Time magazine for the last six, seven years almost. Okay. And is doing well there, mm -hmm. but he's in New York. He was mm -hmm. in Hong Kong earlier and, and is now based in New York. And um, mm. his twin, Kanish, was a journalist in London okay. with Open Democracy. Ishan is the one in Time magazine. Kanish was in London. He's also moved to New York. Okay. Went back to graduate school. Did some... Um, um, I did a master's degree in history. They both are graduates from Yale. And so they're truly into the father's footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> no. London. Their mother writes very well too. She's a mm. professor of, of English, so, right. so it, I think they've got it from both sides. <laughs> but uh, now, when when the kids come home and uh, you 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 tend to spend time with them, so what is the kind of relationship like Sunanda has with the kids? Yes, I mean it's you know they're, they're not children anymore, mm. so these are relationships amongst adults, and yes, they do get along very well. And um, my sons sadly don't get that much time to come here. Ishan mm -hmm. gets a grand total of three weeks a year of leave. Oh. And he has obviously his mother's family to visit. Um, he has some holidays he'd like to take with yeah. girlfriends. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't see them that often. Uh, you, you were also <coughs> awarded the most stylish man in Delhi. So, what what is the inspiration for that style? Look, I, 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 company? I didn't seek <laughs> that distinction and I'm surprised I got it. Most of my life I've rather been indifferent mm. to what I wear and how I look. And I don't say this with um, with false modesty. Mm -hmm. It's simply that um, it just wasn't the most important thing. I mean, I didn't grow up surrounded by a very fashion-conscious family. In fact, um, as a as a middle-class boy growing up in India, you don't think about those things mm -hmm. very much. And certainly, from about class ten onwards. My trademark style, so-called, was just pants and a kurta. For. But does Sunanda gives you uh, tidbits? Oh, yes, what and Sunanda, what not Sunanda is absolutely my style consultant when it comes <laughs> particularly to uh, evening, evenings out and so on. Dr. Tharoor, how much time do you really get for writing now? Between the busy schedule, you're attending school functions, and Shastri Bhavan, cabinet meetings. So, uh, do you really get enough time for writing? I've got no time for writing. The truth is that writing requires time, which I don't have. It's right. a very, very demanding and busy job. It requires a space inside your head, which I don't have. That is, you need to create an alternative universe. And you're mm -hmm. writing a novel, which is what I started to do. But you're seeing so much happening in politics. So you're not thinking of penning a book on politics or what you're going through, what you're seeing around yourself? I don't think it would be right to do that until one has left that world. Okay. I think as long as you're in it, you owe a certain loyalty mm -hmm. to that profession and played by its rules. If one day... So you um, mean to say you won't be able to write an honest uh, piece hmm. uh, as long as you're in there in the profession? If one day, for whatever reason, I'm no longer hmm. in politics or I choose to retire from politics, certainly, you know, I've been bested so much 
to write about sort of my reflections, my memoirs, my autobiography, whatever you like. <laughs> and I've always said, no, 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 I haven't done enough to do that. But perhaps one day I could look back and talk about this world, but this is not the time. But you haven't, the, the kind of life you, you've seen, a lot of, a lot of churnings, it's quite an eventful life you've led. None of the film producers or the directors have contacted you. <laughs> Certainly hope not, thank you. <laughs> And then this is, I'm a simple guy who's enjoying it. His two favorite <laughs> items, by the way, are idlis and mangoes. Okay, so wish you all the best, Dr. Tharoor. Thank you. Pleasure meeting you. My pleasure, Neil. Thank you. Thank you.